Good afternoon, everybody. All protocols followed. I was told late last night <laughs> that I would be reading the eulogy. I had a look at what had been written and I thought, I'm going to do my version. So here it goes. Christopher John Kirubi was born on the 20th of August, 1941, in Kongoni Farm in Naivasha. 1941 was, of course, the height of World War II and also the peak of colonial rule in Kenya. Christopher was the fourth born child of Andrew Minor and Kafura Wamboi Joguna. Andrew worked for a white settler family who are owners of Kongoni Farm. It is indeed in Kongoni Farm that Andrew and Kafura raised their children, namely Salome Wamboi, Elizabeth Waidera, the late Cosmos Njuguna, Christopher Kirubi, Anthony Martin Minor, and Dr. Michael Kishohe Kirubi. A last tragedy hit the family when their mother, Kafura, died of childbirth complications in 1948. Andrew subsequently remarried, which caused a rift in the family when his new wife was unable or unwilling to take care of his six children. Shortly thereafter, the family disintegrated and went into different directions divided amongst various relatives. Christopher, however, continued to stay with his father in Kongoni Farm. Alas, tragedy would strike once again when Andrew was killed at the beginning of the Mau Mau War. These were turbulent times. The settler farmer, fearing for his life, relocated to South Africa but not before he promised to educate young Christopher, who was now an orphan. Christopher attended Naivasha Primary School, then joined Colonia High School and completed his A-levels at Friends School Kamusinga. He then joined Strathmore for his A-levels, but was unable to complete his studies because due to financial constraints. Christopher was, however, a lifelong learner. He loved education, and throughout his life up to the end, he continued to engage in continuous education. Now my brother Jimmy will take over and do his uh, work experience. <coughs> Good afternoon, business. Let me look at this. <laughs> Dr. Kirubi has had a long and rich career history. He began his work life as a salesman with Shell Africa, with Shell, Afri with Shell he was then employed at Voice of Kenya, who at one time even took him for further training in Australia. Thereafter, he worked for the pharmaceutical company Sterling Winthrop, um, and later worked for CMC Motors, also worked for Kenatco. Uh, those are some of the few companies he worked for before he decided to go into self-entrepreneurship. He registered and opened his own firm, Kiruma International Company Limited, trading mostly in coffee, and had one property at that time, Kiruma Court. In 1982, he set up shop within a rented office at International Life House. 
This was a building owned by Queensway Development uh, Corporation. And then when the owners uh, left the country in 1985, they appointed Dr. Kirubi as a director. Later, together with his partners, Dr. Kirubi acquired the building from Kunze Development Corporation, and it's at this time that he changed the name to International House. He was able to substantially grow his portfolio of properties. Um, he was able to expand also to other sectors of our economy uh, through his entrepreneurship, thus giving birth to other companies uh, that he owned, such as Hako Industries. Over the years, Dr. Kirubi has worked, owned, and been a board member in various local and, inter and international companies and institutions, ranging from government, retail sector, manufacturing, advertising, property, agriculture, um, etc. He also served in many industry associations like CAM, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Global Health, NGOs, Global Business Coalition for Africa, and as chairman of the Kenya Private Sector, HIV and AIDS Business Council. Until he passed away, he was the chairman of Hako Industries. He was the chairman of Hako Industries. Manufacturers have entertained, entered, uh, having entered the manufacturing sector in the 1970s, he was recognized as a one of the first indigenous uh, Kenyans in manufacturing. He was also the chairman of Coca-Cola, Nairobi Media, Nairobi Bottlers, DHL, Worldwide Express, Capital Media, International House Limited, Smart Application. He was the deputy chairman of Bayer East Africa. All of these companies of which we've heard about and how he went about his business in the last uh, few days um, at home, at his home, and also when the business side uh, gave their tributes here. He was also the director and majority shareholder of Centum Investment Company. Apart from his personal work, and we've heard from the political class, Dr. Kirubi was involved extensively with several African governments. He also served on the National Economic and Social Council, which was responsible for crafting Kenya's current blueprint for growth, Vision 2030, under President Kibaki's regime. He also has worked with the government of Ghana, members of the Investors, Associ Investors Advisory Council, and as Ghanaian Honorary Consul General in Kenya from the year 2000 to 2008. He is a true nationalist, passionate ambassador for the Kenya country brand. He always had his Kenya wristband and served as chairperson of Brand Kenya Board from March 2016 to December 2017. He was very passionate about making a difference in the lives of disenfranchised groups and was involved in a number of social causes. Until his passing away, he, was, he served on the Harvard Global Advisory Council. He also served on the institution, institution's Africa Advisory Council. He was a co-founder, council member of the African Union Foundation, which was formally launched in 2015 to help Africa be responsible for providing an economic platform for her own without always relying on donor funds. 
He was a founder, trustee of the August 7th Memorial, as we heard from the French uh, representative. Dr. Kirubi has been featured in several local and international publications, most notably Forbes Africa Magazine, Forbes Africa Blog, News Africa Magazine, which features 100 most influential Africans, business and in the financial category. And on the life journey side, he's been on scaling heights, high achieving men in Kenya. He was also in 2015 awarded Africa CEO of the Year by the Africa CEO Forum based in Geneva. In Geneva. He was honored by several governments and is a recipient of the Chief of the Burning Spear, Kenya, the honor of the Grand Medal, Kenya, Ghana, and the insignia of Chevalier of the Legion of Honor by the French government in 2015, an occasion we had great honor in attending. Um, I think there, I'll bring you to sort of round it up soon. When we think of the life of Christopher John Kirubi, we think primarily of great achievements, education, business, media, etc., and the creation of wealth. We think of a life of luxury and worldly belongings. But more than anything else, Christopher John Kirubi loved his family. He did everything in his power to take care of his children and siblings. But deep down in his heart, he never stopped yearning for his mother, Kafura Wamboi. His daughter, Marianne Wamboi, and the many nieces blessed and honored with her name can attest to that. A reporter once asked him, Dr. Kirubi, if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? You have achieved everything possible. What is left for you to do? His answer, heartbreaking but not surprising, was, I would give it all up in a heartbeat just to see my mother's smiling face once again. Christopher John Kirubi rests easy in the loving arms of Kafura Wamboi today. May God hold them both in the palm of his hand. Thank you.